Well, yes, they have tapped into the, to the larger consciousness system because that's what it is, a system going toward lower entropy, toward love, and it turns into this white light. They see, right now, where are your eyes when you're out of body, right? They're back in your body. You don't actually have eyes. You don't actually have ears, but you see and hear things out there. How's that? It's because you interpret in terms of metaphors of your senses because that's the only thing you know. If you don't interpret it in terms of your sense metaphors, you can't think about it, much less talk to somebody else about it. It's not yours to deal with. So everything, the data you get, has to be converted into some metaphor applied to your sensory data because that's all you know. Okay? So, um, uh, and why a white light? Well, why do good cowboys wear white hats? You know, that's, that's part of the uh, archetype. You know, it's a social belief in our, in our system. Uh, besides, a black light would be hard to see, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, what, about the, what about the silver cord? If you remember those people going out of body, it wasn't called out of body in those days. Bob was the one that coined the word ooh because he wanted to get away from all the, the, the junk that went with the, the out of body, the astral projection. But everybody did astral projection. You know, Fox, uh, Muldoon, and Carrington, if you've read all those old books, Everybody that went out of body had a silver cord. They needed that silver cord because that was their lifeline. If that, because their belief was that the spirit and the body had to be a united whole, and if the body lost the spirit, the body would die and go away, and if the spirit lost the body, it would you know, wander forever and be lost and so on. So they had to be connected. That was a fear. That was a need. So they connected it with a silver cord. Okay, well, where are the silver cords now? Bob didn't talk about any silver cords. You know, nobody sees silver cords anymore. Well, they're just not needed anymore because we don't have the same belief system. For those people, that was just like the air hose going down to the diver. Right? It was necessary. If they lost that cord, how could they get back? You know, it's like the breadcrumbs you know, from Hansel and Gretel. You know, that was their way back, and that was their lifeline because that was the belief that they needed it. Okay? So silver cords go away. Um, specific beings, angels, saints, relatives. You know, you see Uncle Fred, right? Uncle Fred, you, you know, he's been dead 10 years, and you go out and see Uncle Fred, and there he is. He's in that same plaid shirt, you know, with that same straw hat, you know, and a corncob pipe, just the way you remember him, that same smile on his face, and you talk with Uncle Fred. Do well, you think Uncle Fred's been 10 years without a change of shirt? Yeah, no. You know, we dress those people based on our own knowledge. That's because that data that says Uncle Fred to us then that's our interpretation. That's our metaphor we put on it. But what about beings in general? When we have a conversation, we get data from, that we interpret as conversation, then we turn it into a being because we have no conception of getting data from a rock, right? It has to be another being if it's talking to us. And if it's a being, of course, we kind of make it look like it's got a head on top and shoulders and arms. We kind of make it look like us because that's our concept of being. So those beings that you see out there, that's your metaphor. The way you dress them is your metaphor, okay? And those people that we don't know how to dress, I mean, we know how to dress Uncle Fred, but we don't know how to dress a lot of those people because we don't really know who they are, where they're from. What do we do? Put a robe on them. They all wear, they all wear robes. Yeah. Robe, robes are high fashion in the, in the non-physical. Everybody there wears robes. I mean, yeah. you, ever, you ever been in the non-physical and seen somebody naked? No, never, because we have, we, we have beliefs generally that, that uh, make us use those metaphors. Okay, um, let's do a couple of more metaphors. Now, those are easy. What about when we heal? What do we do? We, uh, we envision the, the, the bad stuff needs to be healed. It's like a dark mass of some sort, right? And uh, we put white energy on it, we project white light to it until we burn all that dark stuff away. It's the way a lot of us heal. Well, that black thing is just a metaphor, right? That white light is just a metaphor. There is no light. We send somebody energy. Oh, and they feel better. There is no such thing as energy. This is a virtual simulation. That's a metaphor. Energy is our metaphor for something that makes a difference, for something that has power and it can, it can produce an action. Just a metaphor. There's only one active ingredient. Consciousness. Conscious intent is the only active ingredient. That beam of white light is a metaphor. What about the Hindus? The Hindus have chakras, right? They take, uh, they have seven chakras and they place them in different places of the body. The chakras are just metaphors. Okay, 
Now, when I say just metaphor, you might get the idea that metaphors really aren't all that important. No, metaphors are good. We need those. That's how we communicate. We can't communicate without them. It's not that a metaphor, just a metaphor, means it's not really real. We need metaphors. That's how we break things into pieces. That's why I told you there were two databases instead of one. It's easier for you to see it that way. So we take the data, we break it into things that's easier for us to see, that makes sense to us. We give those various pieces properties, right? And then we can talk about it, and then we can have conversations. So we work up these models. They're all models, and they're just models. Okay, so you're beginning to see that I am stepping all over your, your beliefs here. Um, so light's a metaphor. Energy's a metaphor. All of these things are just metaphor. All right. Now, so the nature of a virtual reality. This will be another big step. If you think I'm, I'm leading you down the, you know, the rabbit hole now, you know, well, this, one, this one's a big step for you to take, but it's, it's the way it is. So I'll tell you the way it is. If you, if you, uh, remember, your, or if you remember what your kid was playing, and I'm going to use World of Warcraft and Sims because those are the only two I know. Uh, in the World of Warcraft and Sims, do the, do the people who make those games, do the programmers who make those games, have to render, they render the characters, right? They render the images. Do they have to render oxygen for the images to breathe? Well, you're thinking, oh, that's ridiculous. Of course they don't have to render oxygen for the characters to breathe. They're not real, like us. They're just made up in a computer. They're just virtual characters. Well, you know, if one of those World of Warcraft characters falls in a, in a lake or falls in a river, or if the, in, the, in the Sims they get in a swimming pool and there's no way to get out, there's no ladder, what happens to them? They drown. Why do they drown? Because there's not enough oxygen underwater for them to breathe. That's why they drown. You don't have to simulate or render the details. You only have to render the effects. And that's true in this reality as well. There's no reason at all to render any oxygen in this room. No reason whatsoever to render oxygen in this room. Okay? This is a probabilistic reality, a statistical reality. Here's the, here's the measurement. Yeah, I'm still here. Then the measurement said that there's oxygen in the room. That's because when the measurement was taken, you go to the probability, you go to the, to the statistical distribution, and you make a sample. Is it probable that there's oxygen in this room? Well, look at the rule set. The rule set says, well, there's trees around, you know, there's, uh, you know, still there's plankton in the ocean, all these things that make oxygen. Yes, it was probable that there'd be oxygen in this room. Well, if it's probable that there's going to be oxygen in this room, then we carry on. It keeps rendering us. We cut down all the trees, kill all the plankton, then it's not probable that there's going to be an oxygen here. We all fall over, you see. So it's a probability-based reality. You don't render anything that you don't have to. That's wasted cycles. Okay, so right now, you're all looking to the front of the room. In your minds, there's no data in your data stream that's rendering the back wall. None. Back wall doesn't exist for you now because it's not in your data stream because you're not looking at it. You turn around and look at the back wall, this is not rendered for you. You only get the data you need when you need it. It would be wasteful of computer cycles to render anything that wasn't needed. In, the, in those video games, your little video character turns around a corner and in, in the background you see the trees spring up and the mountains you know, jump up. That's because their server isn't very fast. Well, this is working on a cycle of 10 to the minus 44 seconds. Let me tell you, it's fast. You don't notice those kinds of things here. Okay, now I'm going to, uh, oh, here's one important thing, that, that middle uh, bullet there. When something is rendered, it must be consistent both historically with existing data and causally with the rule set. Those are the only two rules. This is a statistical reality. And what it renders is based on those two rules. It has to be consistent. That's why when that particle went through that, was detected at that slit, it couldn't do anything after it was brought into the reality as a particle except go on a straight line like particles do. Okay? Because once it's rendered here, it's here and it has to abide by the rule set. And the rule set says that particles travel in a straight line unless acted on by some other force. So as soon as the probability collapses to a physical value, then you have to abide by the history. You can't have history jumping around. It has to be consistent, and you have to abide by the rule set. Well, it's the same with us. And you're going to see this is going to explain a whole lot of things that are right now unexplainable. Okay, now I'm going to solve one, uh, one deep mystery that we've all uh, pondered over. 
and probably uh, laughed at, and we probably wrote it down as a semantics issue, but you're 